I'm a, I'm a, I'm a startup business. Yeah. Um, in an industry that I'm quite new. I mean, I like fashion, but I've mm. never been into <coughs> trying to make money out of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, because I'm trying to build a brand, mm -hmm. how credible do you think I should try to? I mean, how do you think I should be able to get to gain credibility in that market? All right. Well, I think that underpins credibility is integrity. Integrity yeah, and right? trust, because right, as, absolutely. as I told you, right. I'm going to sell some product that absolutely. people over here just tell right. okay, where are you going to get the product from and how people going to... Well, I don't know where you're going to get it from, I could have told you, because I spent a lot of years in the fashion industry and you're going to go out to the supplier, yeah. right? Yeah. That's your source of suppliers, I used to do it all the time, I've done it in textiles, I've done it in yarn, I've done it right across the fashion industry, so I understand exactly what you mean. So I didn't want to be interrupted at that time, but I understood what you're going to do, you're going to the source. That's understandable. Yeah. And then you're going to pitch yourself to the source and you're going to look to bring that to market. Yeah. You may get hurdles at times because if they're selling soldiers at a phenomenal value, they may say, well, we don't want to open up that market. That's their market. But you will penetrate because everybody has a market. Or they may bring it out in a different brand name and you'll be able to bring something close to it. Yeah. yeah? So, you know, that's understandable. <laughs> so really what you're looking for is suppliers. Yeah. Right? So what you need to do, do you have a telephone? I do, yeah. Do you have a database of suppliers? Yeah. All right? How many? Just a few, um, I mean... Yeah. Right, see, that's the second question. Now, I'm not knocking you, and now listen, there is no wrong or right here. This is not about ego. All the ego goes outside. I'm not here to pacify your ego, all right? And I'm not the type of person that's easily like. I do sales by results, so you need to understand that. So it's not... When I come across in the way that I come across, it's because I'm passionate and I love what I do, and I don't cut corners, all right? But what I'm saying, by the second question, it was that whoa. Do you understand? You've got to start thinking, right? Right. The next time I ask you that question, I want you to be able to tell me you've got at least 200 suppliers. 200? At least, globally. Because you've got VoIP systems now, you can find all over the world at a very low cost. And majority of the world, what does the majority of the world do business in? Dollar. What language? English. 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 I've got people selling to Belgium now that don't even speak the language. <laughs> They're placing people in there. In, in, in an industry that they don't really understand too much. But they're doing it. All right, so what I'm saying to you, it's about you, it's about you. All right, do you believe? I do, I do. I trust my product, the quality right. of it, and right. I know it's good. Right, now you're selling product. But what about if I say you are the product? You need to become the product. You are the product. All right, you with me? Yeah. Okay? How much sales, how much sales training have you done? That's where your gap is. Wait, I've done sales before. Yeah, fantastic. I'm not not the kind of sales that you're talking about. I was doing what um, kind of sales is that? I was doing um, fundraising, street fundraising. Right, I'm listening to. So you've been out on the you've been out on the been out on the bottom line. Yeah, Good. and I've been able to to make deals. Yeah, on the street, Good. straight straight up. Good. So what stops you making them now? Mm. Say again. What stops you making them now? Well, I'm not really now. Well, see what you understand. A lot of these suppliers, they want business. They're hungry. Yeah. They don't just want selfishness as a supplier. They don't just want Harrods as a supplier. Yeah. They want his own market. Yeah. Anyone I've ever met, any supplier I've ever met, he always wants to be the Selfridges. Mm. All right? They want to grow. They want to be. They want distribution. Yeah. All right? They might have the main contract, but that's limited. And for the price that they're paying, Selfridges and Harrods, they bought are very hard. So you can create new markets and open up new markets for them. They're listening. Mm. But the question is, where are you at? Where do you want to go? How do you want to get there? And when are you going to achieve it? Because if you haven't got that in your head and you ain't got a time frame to know, then you're going to be spinning. Okay? So the first thing you've got to do is learn the game. Right? So have you ever done any telemarketing before? Prospecting. In what? In anything. Prospecting. Generating new clients. But do you understand? Now you don't have to know a hundred million things, you just need to know what you want. <coughs> what you want to achieve, have the vision. This is what entrepreneurs do. Yes. Who understands the key word entrepreneur? What does it mean? What's the meaning of the word entrepreneur? Someone who has a vision and takes risk. Absolutely. Yeah, I wish you were going to answer that. So I'm a good student, I was taking notes. <laughs> All right. But you understand? I do. All right? I do. So what I'm saying to you is, you know, what this is about, it's about challenging yourself. Yeah. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? What do you see? Who do you want to be? Why do you want to be that person? Mm. Hmm? Now the first thing, if you've got all negative inhibitions of selling, what's the first thing you're going to do? 
Right? Let me get this for you. All right? Yes. Okay. Enjoy. Safe travel. Okay? Good. Okay, darling. All right? So, first thing. All right? If you've got a negative inhibition of something, what happens? Ladies, if you see a man walks through the door, <laughs> and you've got a negative inhibition of him, a negative inhibition, what happens? You don't approach them. <laughs> you don't, oh, don't approach me, right? What are you looking at? Well, you better hold it. I'll be coming over here, but you understand what I'm saying, right? So what I'm saying to you is about posture, it's about you. Identity, self-identity. Mm -hmm. Know who you are, know what you're about, believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. That's the first self. If you can't sell it to yourself, how do you expect to sell it to anyone else? Mm -hmm. It's the first rule in the game. Mm -hmm. So you've got to convince yourself. You've got to believe in what you do. And remove those negative inhibitions. Because those negative inhibitions become barriers. Or oh, I don't want to sound like those dodgy salespeople. Or oh, I don't want to sound like I'm pushy. Or oh, I don't want to... Well, don't sound like that, then learn how to do it. Yeah. It's a skill, it's an art. Is that asked one minute? Let me answer this question, I'll come to you. Is that answer your question? Yes, he does. Yeah? He does. Thank you. And there's obviously more, there's a lot of free stuff that we have, and you know, just tap in, cost will give me a card at the end. And loads of material. Thank you. Can you just expand on that when you're talking about um, the first cell is to yourself, and if someone does have that negative in inhibition towards cells, how would you say is the best way for them to do it? Ego ergo song. Anyone know what that means? Sorry? Ego. Ego. Ergo song. Okay, really I am, therefore I am. Or I am, therefore I exist. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying, if you can't sell it to yourself, <laughs> who's going to believe you? Mm. Because when you look at someone and they look at you as a mirror, <laughs> and you go, uh, and they first know you get, because you're going to get no, right? Oh, every day you're going to get no. Every day. Now that's men in the room now. When you chased after the woman of your dreams <laughs> and she said no the first time, did you give up? Yes. You? Give up? You? And women, when you said no, did you really mean it? Probably didn't, didn't yeah. they? <laughs> waiting for something else yeah. to happen. You were waiting to be convinced, right? No really meant well. I ain't seen nothing yet, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Now, he doesn't necessarily have to be pushy, but do you understand? If that man believes in himself and he's confident, he wants you to be the one with his dreams, he's going to woo you. There's a thing called wooing. Mm. And it's what I'm actually working on my thesis towards now. It's relationship selling. Selling through relationships. Oh, yeah. There's a psychology of it. There's, a, there's a, you know, the science of it. All right? And what we understand is about building a relationship. All right? So what I'm saying to you, if you can't build that relationship with yourself, I always say there's three of me in the room. Me, myself, and I. And all three of us are present, and I talk to all three. Okay? And if I can't convince all three, it ain't nothing. Right? Because you've got to be able to do it to yourself before you go out to anyone else to do it. Mm. Otherwise, why is it happening? If you ain't got no self-belief. Self-belief is the key. Yeah. And then people believe in you. Does that make sense? Of course. Yeah. All right? Is that making sense to you? Crystal. Yeah? Any other questions there, Gangway? Yeah. I've got questions, but I'll wait for everyone else to go. You want to wait? Oh, you're going to wait for the hammer blow, are you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No worries, that's good. Yeah. All right, um, anyone else? Come, let's come. I see the papers. Yeah. Come on, I can always go a straightforward, boring <laughs> seminar if you want. You know, I can, I'd rather answer your questions. That's what I'm here for. To show you how to make some more money. Mm -hmm. And believe you me, when I've finished with you, you'll be ready to go. Or you'll be knowing, maybe this ain't the business of me. I need to find the right business for me. Mm -hmm. But you will start to earn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? My okay, friend. so when you're learning. All right, anyone ever drive a car? Yeah. Anyone drive a car? Right. Mm -hmm. When you started driving a car, well, no, I'll come back to you in a moment, is that? Did you have L plates on? Yes. No. You did? Why did you have L plates on? <laughs> right. When you put it into first gear, what happened? It stalled. Right. Did you give up? No. Just like a little baby when it's walking, does it give up? No. no. Right. What does it do? Stop. Get up. It gets back up and does what? Try again. Try again because it knows no inhibition. It knows I want to walk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like you knew you wanted to drive. You got into second gear. When second gear or first gear got up to 20 miles an hour, 10 or 10, 15, 20 miles an hour, what happens to the gearbox? It shakes. Right, why? Needs to change it. Time to change gear, would you be yeah. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're going up the gear. Mm -hmm. And then when you go up and up, you're going up the gear, would you agree? Yeah. And then sometimes you've got to drop a gear and go back up the gear, is that right? Yeah. To run the car smoothly. Have you got to time the clutch? Yeah. So everything's about timing, would you agree? Mm -hmm. Right? And then when you learn to drive, what happened? When you stopped learning, what did you do? Did you take your old plates off? Did you take your old plates off or not? Yeah. Take L off for learning, what do you get? 
Earning. Earn it. There you go. <laughs> so you've got to go through the gears. You've got to learn to drop the gears, up the gears. Systematic. And if it's automatic, drop on automatic. Just run over one arm. <laughs> but it's still going through the gears. Still going through the gears. It's calm and easy. Okay? Sorry, madam. What was the question? So, let me... My question. Yeah. What is the right percentage for commission? Mm. Pricing strategy. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting one. No. Right? Very good, interesting one. All right? Have you priced it already? Yeah. Have you took it to market? Yeah. Right? Is it too, have you, when you've taken it to market, well, right? have you done your direct cost? Do you know what direct cost is? Yeah. You know your break even? Yeah. All right? And what's the margins at the moment? Yeah, uh, I think it's about. You think? Well, it, it varies. Tell me what the average is. 15. 15%? 25. Right? Between 15. Is that your sales rep or overall? Gross, mar gross, gross, gross margin? Um, no, it's not gross. Right, is that net? Mm -hmm. Right, good, so you're looking at So is that for the sales rep or, or overall on the product itself? The product itself. Right, and in terms of turnover, do you have to, how many units do you have to turn over to make, reach the target that you want to reach? Uh, quite a bit, and that's what What's quite a bit? Is. Tell me the figures. Uh, I think for... When the season kicks in very well, yeah. I think you need to be doing something like maybe 50, 100, 200. Well, see, there's a lot of thinking going on. Mm -hmm. yes. right? And what I want you to do is be specific. All right? Because, see, when you're specific, then it can help you with your pricing strategy. Does that That's make right. sense? Yeah. All right? Because what it is, you're, what it is you're, you're sort of like, well, maybe, and a lot of entrepreneurs do that. So it's nothing personal, but a lot of entrepreneurs, maybe, if, maybe, well, is there a bad, so, well, how do you think your customer's going to feel when you price it? Okay, so do you give a discount? Would you give me a 10% discount if I gave you an order now? Now! Would you do yes. it? You would? Yes, yeah. just like that? Yes. Why? Because I want you to buy it. Well, where's the value? It's the fact that it's cheaper. Yeah, but it's the fact that it's cheaper, you see? So you sell it on price. Mm -hmm. Worst way to sell in the world. Mm -hmm. Because you've just told me you're having me over. That's why salespeople have a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. The one of the first things they do is price slash. We're not horse trading. Mm -hmm. We're selling. And the key to selling is value. So the first thing I'll say to you if you ask me for a okay, ask me for a discount. Go on. Ask me for a discount. Can I have a discount? Right, I can think about that, but what is, what is it you would do to earn that discount from me? Because obviously we're in business, margins are very low. I'm going to bring somebody else can't. to you. Right, and in terms of that, when you say somebody else, what would be the value of that person? And buy something. Right, and would that person then bring other people and so forth? Yeah. That would be the way. Can you see what I'm doing with you here? Yes. So I haven't agreed with you. Yeah. What I'm doing with you, I'm making you earn your commission. I'm making you earn your discount. Do you understand? There's a value there. I'm not just going to go and give you and say, right, 10% I'll have the deal, see you later, thank you, I've got a deal. And then wonder why it cancels tomorrow. All right? It's not just about grabbing the money out of there. What about the relationship? Mm. Eh? Where's the value? If it's just about the money? Hmm? It's not about, well, just about money. There's got to be a relationship. There's got to be longevity. Where's the sustainability? You're selling value. See, two things customers like, especially in recessions, Two things clients like is confidence and safety. They're two things. If they don't feel safe with you, they're not confident with you, they're not likely to buy. Does that make sense? Yeah. So in terms of your pricing strategy, 15% is, you know, it's there of our rights, but you've got to work out in units, my dear. So if you say, for instance, you wanted to earn, say, a £1,000 a week, and you were, you, uh, <coughs> you, 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 you know, units were at 100 I think, I think there are two questions in that question or whatever one is <coughs> from what, I, what I've learned a lot of online digital marketing agencies are selling other people's products and they're doing it at a massive discount you've got Groupon Wild you've got all of them out there yeah price slashing yeah okay and then and they've got they've got the volume they're selling they're, they're selling. retailing and reselling and then making it instead of you making it. They're retailing. How long have you seen most retailers have a sale on since the recession, since 2008? Forever, yeah. hey? Who trusts the retailers now? Hey? When they say, um, when they say um, sales, <laughs> who believes it now? No one. No one. How long, why do you think most retailers are going out of business? Mm. Hey? A brilliant business went out of my brilliant business model. I went in all the time with the kids before, Toys R Us. I loved it. Yeah. It was like a wonderland. It's gone out of business. Oh, it's got out of bags for the kids. Great value. But they got taught up into that 
uh, bug off what we call buy one get one free mm -hmm. and all that price slashing, price slashing. Well surely that comes down but to trust, doesn't it? Well there's an element of trust there, yeah. There's an element if, of if trust. A customer but there's an element of realism, no. realism in, in life. And I think what I'm learning in my in, in business is that there are there are there is, is two, there's two of them. So you've got all these digital who, who've got the volume, but you've also got to cultivate the people who pay the real price for what it is that you're selling. And it's quite difficult to get people to pay the real well, price. What I'm asking you is, you see, what, what you're doing, if you're talking about online, that's a type of different, that's retailing with a level of selling in it. So that's really, what you're looking at there is you're gonna underpin that with things like customer service, where's the value? Right? Because there's a lot of other retailers that don't price slash, don't cut prices, and do very well, thank you. Are you with me? So it's where you position yourself, depending on what you're doing. Now, if you're going in against someone like Groupon, who's quite an aggressive model, and they've got a very aggressive pricing strategy, are you likely to compete with someone like Groupon? No, but Groupon sells our products. No, but they, right, but how did Groupon start? I don't know. Right. It's like a game brand to so a lot of businesses offering the discount. So he started by reaching out to businesses. Right? So what I'm saying to you is, there's a reactionary cell and there's a proactive cell. That's right, yes. yes. If you're waiting for it to happen, that's not where it's at. When you're starting out, it needs to be proactive. Actually, you need to take some risk. Right? Otherwise, you're gonna spend a lot of money. Now, I'm not saying the other way doesn't work, but you'll find the other way generally works around relationship building. That's right. Or generating leads. You've still got to close the order. The order still needs to be converted. Now, a lot of online sales, generally under 500 quid, you'll find that you were talking about trust. But it comes down to the same thing again, relationship. If I don't have a relationship with you, I'm not likely to trust you. That's right. So you, know, you need to develop that level of, so forget about conquering the cell and think about, can I do business with this person for the next five, 10 years? I sit down with people all the time. I can take the order all day long. I'm talking about a phenomenal amount of money at times, but I'll turn it down. Because I sit there, I know me and this company are not going to be able to work together. But also, surely, that if you see somebody as a long-term customer, then pricing is also a key thing there, because if, if you're going to price it to get a quick buck, you've lost that customer. Absolutely. You know, I, Absolutely. I, yeah. had, I enrolled in a particular stock market thing, and I've been a customer there for a long time, because yeah. it's good value, Absolutely. but it's not, you know, it's not overpriced. But Absolutely. So, so they can you you. So it's asymmetric. A, a recurring customer, not only trust, but people see you as good value. Absolutely. Like and it's both. It works both ways. Asymmetric. It's reciprocal behaviour, right? Reciprocal behaviour is what you're looking at. Do they see you as value, and do you value them? And that's the basis of what makes good things. Work. It's like they say, what's the value of a good contract? Okay. Two parties coming together in agreement. From a tailor coming to make a promise to come together. So if one part side of the group party is not happy with the contract, that contract's likely to bust. Both parties need to have a sense of a buy -in. And this is what I'm saying. So if you're, if you're looking at your pricing strategy, you play around with it, 15%, you've got to look at the units you need to do. And if the units are too excessive, then you've got to change it around. Don't be scared to change it. Yeah? Maybe it's just not the right model. Yeah? Play around with it in a different way, and then come back from another angle. You know, I always say when you're starting out, look for large profit margins in terms of commission-wise, because it means that whilst you're learning, you can get to cover your cost a lot easier. Mm. All right? When you're starting to compete with larger operations, this thing with marketing, I'll be familiar, with thing with marketing, there's a lot of marketing. When we go out and you know, there's a model that I've designed called TIME, so I target information market educate, but I say to omit yourself and it's educate market information target, so you reverse it. Mm. And why I'd say that, because a lot of companies have the money to invest. Most companies throw so much money at marketing, they lose so much, but they don't even know where they're losing it. But they're looking to make that one key product because they have the budget. Now, I've met a lot of people in business who go out, they mortgage their house, they take loans and all these types of things, but they haven't made a sale. Now, if you're not making sales, you're not in business. The key is to make sales. Yeah? Now, once you're making sales, you'll find you won't need the loans. Yeah. Well, if it is a loan, it's to leverage and build yourself in a different way. And the banks will be knocking on your door because the liquidity will be coming into your bank account because you'll be generating the sales. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right? So you know, if we, what you need to do is maybe look at it if a 15% margin. I mean, there's a lot. There's a model that I used to go down with that. But it's knowing how many units you need to turn over, 
breaking that down by the month, by the week, by the day, to the hour, and think is it realistic to do? And if it's not realistic, if it's too much, then you need to take a step back. Down. I did this for you, didn't I? All right. All right, it's an old accountancy trick that they, they, they do all the time. It's about breaking it down. If it's too much, then you need to look at it. Or, don't necessarily give up if you don't want to give up. It's like thinking about going horizontally. <coughs> Can I bring people in and replicate what I'm doing? All right, because that's a, another way. What do you mean way. franchise? What do you well, mean not so much franchise. It could be joint venture. It could be strategic partnership. Yeah, it's just make, to make the units. 